Ratchet and Clank is another entry into the if it isn't broken, why make it any better game genre. The series has been feature complete since the first iteration. Insomniac is now on their fourth console generation of refinements, making them more akin to a family of generational winemakers than game developers. I'll be the first to admit this is a meager damning with faint praise, but what else am I supposed to say? Even I can come across a brick wall where all I can do is shrug and gesture wildly at some middling cracks in the mortar and say, yeah, it's a functional wall. I suppose I'm making the argument that simply creating what you know how to create well and making it again and again is worth rolling your eyes over, like your grandmother presenting you with another hand-knitted quilt over Christmas. Yeah, they're cozy, but eventually you have enough goddamn quilts. It's fine to enjoy this game for what it is, but at the same time feel like a greater opportunity has been lost. After all, platformers tend to come in two flavors. Either each new game takes the established formula and adds a new gameplay mechanic that freshens things up with new ideas. This would be the Mario approach. Or this, where you find something that works and you just make a slightly better version each time, normally exhausting both developer and player interest by the third game. See Spyro the Dragon, also by Insomniac, but Ratchet and Clank just keeps going, and I'm at a loss to explain why. It's like this series is comfort food some of you just can't stop yourself from sticking a spoon into whenever you're feeling sad. So now, after having exhausted every single upping of aunties, with a new galaxy, time travel, demon dimension, and origin stories for both Ratchet and Clank, we come to the inevitable heat death of creativity that is the alternate reality story. It's the same shallow narrative framing device comics are so fond of. When the hero travels to dimension politically correct X, where everything is the same except for characters that might expand market demographics. I suppose it's fitting this series comes from Insomniac, who also released Miles Morales, another character stemming from an alternate dimension, brought over to ours to increase profits. It's enough to make me wish that Erwin Schrodinger had stuffed himself in a box and died before he ever explained the concept. I'm being a bit uncharitable. If I were tasked with writing a story inside a franchise with so many roots sunk into the earth that it would take a damn bursting to uproot it, I would grab any framing device I could for some creative freedom. The appeal of alternate dimensions is the what-if scenario, after all. You can explore ideas that would be out of line or character in the prime dimension. So what's the what-if scenario that needed to tear the fabric of space apart just to tell us? What if Ratchet and Clank were girls? The only other difference to be found is that Lady Ratchet and Lady Clank never became friends, so the bad guy won. But by the end of the game, that difference has been rectified and they team up to stop him. So they gave themselves an entirely new dimension full of possibilities, and the goal was to make it exactly like the one they left behind. I don't even understand the reasoning for adding a female Ratchet. If Ratchet were human, I could at least see why representing female fans of the series might be desirable. But Ratchet is a floppy-eared raccoon ferret thing. He's tailor-made to be cute and marketable to everyone. It's called a mascot character. You're not supposed to relate with him since there's nothing relatable about him. The only thing Insomniac accomplished is ensure a whole new spectrum of creepy Rule 34 for this series. In a series where the secondary character is worn on your back and occasionally gets his own levels that suck, it's a strange choice to introduce another secondary character 16 games later who plays identically to Ratchet, gets her own robot sidekick stuck to her back, and has pretty much the same character traits. I say secondary character, but to be honest, if I added up the playtime, I think I spent more time in control of Rivet than Ratchet. She even ends up defeating the nefarious of each dimension while Ratchet waits on the sidelines to congratulate her and hand her a towel. So I'm guessing I'm forced into making the incredibly imaginative reply, Ratchet and Clank, more like Rivet and Kit. I think the game even made that joke at one point. Gotta go. Here, it'll help you get home. I designed it to be one size fits all. That helmet is the very antithesis to one size fits all, since it's shaped to fit a Lombax head, of which Rivet is the only existing one in her dimension. I've always been bothered by the design of a Lombax's ears. Ears have distinctive smooth inner curvatures leading to the inner ear, both of which a Lombax lack. It's just a floppy head appendage covered in fur, making it as bad for receiving sound waves as can be designed. What's that? You want me to get back to sending something that matters? If I send a Sonic the Hedgehog game, you'd want me to mention Sonic's weird Cyclops eye and double pupils, wouldn't you? I just want to make this into something you can never unsee, and I think that is mission accomplished. We haven't done anything heroic in... years. What if everyone thinks we're washed up? <gasps> what if we are washed up? The universe does not exist just so you can continuously prove how heroic you are. I thought Captain Quark was supposed to be the narcissist in the series. The parade comes under attack by Thugs for Less, and they just sort of wave that off and continue the parade like it's no big deal, even though there's a weapon that can tear holes in the fabric of space on stage for the taking. I have repaired the dimension here, so you can travel through dimensions and find your family. How about we finally set about exploring the no doubt complex, convoluted, mystery of the missing Lombax. But in truth, this is a setup for what feels like the next game, since Ratchet will spend the entirety of this one agonizing over the idea of not living up to their expectations, as if he hadn't already saved the galaxy several times over and even defeated the villain who wiped out most of his species to begin with. The game begins with a plan to find the missing Lombax, and then has the temerity to end with that still being the plan. So this game sequel baits you right from the beginning. The entire multi-dimensional crisis that ensues from this could have been avoided had Clank not made a show of giving a repaired Dimensionator to Ratchet it in the middle of a damn parade that was just attacked, and instead just quietly fix it and give it to him in private. This thing is potentially a weapon of multi-dimensional destruction that's caused massive problems in past games. A little caution should be warranted. The bridge is shot! There has to be another way across! Hmm, 
The rifts are reacting to the face quartz in your glove. I was a bit perplexed by the breathless marketing surrounding this game like stale convention air, since every new mechanic shown off was described as only being possible on the PlayStation 5. Ratchet can now grab dimensional cracks with his glove tether, which instantly moves him to that location. It's used decently well in combat and platforming, but it doesn't fundamentally change anything since you have no control over their placement. It's just environmental interaction, but this is supposed to be an impressive feature that proves that paying $1,000 to a scalper was a well thought out purchase. I recall playing Prey in 2006 and it only had the same exact feature. It was used far more extensively, and that game came out on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And let's not forget about Portal 1 and 2. We're going to a dimension where I always win, so you can finally know how it feels. But why would you want to take the two of them with you? They're the reason you keep losing in this one. You're just exporting your problem along with you. It's not like there's a law of physics in the other dimension that assures things will go your way. The Dimensionator, it... What have I done? What have you done? Yeah. Who are you? Someone with a lot of questions. Let's go for a ride. You just come across a broken robot muttering to himself and decide to take him with you to get answers when you don't even know what he's blaming himself for. Wait, I have to find my friend. If someone tells you this and you still drag them against their will to another planet, you just kidnap someone. Emperor Nefarious, you have returned early from your conquest. Like a self-assembling jigsaw puzzle, things more or less just fall into place for this game. Because Dr. Nefarious didn't seem to have a plan for what he'd do if Emperor Nefarious wasn't away, or for what he will do when this dimension's Nefarious inevitably returns. Plots just airdrop leaflets and newspapers in the vicinity of main characters let them know when they're not in Kansas anymore. I can't believe! First mission in forever and my cover's blown! The game started with Rivet wearing a robot disguise to stay incognito while making her way around this planet. Ratchet, on the other hand, can waltz around as he is and it's no problem at all. The game only dropped a wanted poster for Alombax on him five minutes ago, so you'd expect the law to be on him the second he stuck his head out in public. I'll make you a deal. You see that blimp? You help me take control of it, and I'll help you get into Nefarious Tower. It's the only place in the city you're gonna find a royal starship. Let me get this straight. Emperor Nefarious has a propaganda blimp flying over the city, a city full of robots, and you want to hack it to send a message to them. I would be down for this if the game presented a positive outcome for doing it, and not just a goal for having a goal's sake to stimmy the player, but the message is never brought up again, nor does it compel any robot to switch sides in the story. Deal's a deal. That's Glitch. She'll help you get onto the Emperor's private shuttle to the tower. <laughs> Access consoles in that huge statue of Nefarious in the center of the city. Just hook her up and she'll handle the rest. All it took was a computer program the Resistance already possessed to reach the heart of Emperor Nefarious' palace undetected. Why haven't they already used that to stage an attack on him? Clank. Inside thoughts when you're about to clobber the villain, please. Why do I need a password? I'm the Emperor. How about I obliterate you instead? Ha 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 ha! Would Emperor Nefarious really go flying around in this tiny ship when he has a fleet of battle cruisers? Clank is already bonded with the person who took him against his will off planet when he wanted to stay and find Ratchet. Whoa. This wasn't what was in my account last time. Oh, that is because I added our mutual friend on Nefarious City. Okay. Not only does this game miss the opportunity to have different playstyles for its two protagonists, which if you ask me is the only reason to have two main characters, they also share money in any weapons you buy due to Ms. Zircon mistakenly combining their accounts. Interesting. You must have a rift tether in your glove too. This also extends to abilities locked behind the plot. Ratchet can grab onto portals and pull them to himself because he has a piece of the Dimensionator's face quartz, something Rivet couldn't have, but she does and the game offers no explainable reason for why she starts a game possessing an incredibly rare space-time crystal in her glove. The only time one of these two possessed an ability the other didn't that was properly explained was Ratchet getting a phase dash from Skid who is part of the Resistance along with Rivet who already had one of her own. We didn't follow that Lombax and his robopet across dimensions just to get stopped by some fuzzballs! So you got like nine and a half seconds to tell us where they're at. You really gotta admire thugs for less. Once they take a job, they're in it for the long haul. Even when pulled to another dimension where no one will pay them. Got this at Zerky's. Mort can finally fix that ship she's been working on. Rivet went to Zerky's to retrieve a part she needed to repair her ship here on Sargasso. But the ship she flew away from Nefarious City before crash landing back on this planet is the same as a broken ship she needed to fix. Woo! And now for my final enemy... Mortz's pressure locks. It appears that these locks must be hit quickly. Yep. 
Morts are funny like that. You don't need to attempt to clarify the insane logic in a platformer. We give developers a pass on that one. Offering explanations only activates the uncanny valley of game design, since almost nothing in the game is something common people can navigate. You're nefarious. He looks a lot like mine. Evil like him, too. And that Lombax. I know it might sound crazy, but... You think he is your dimensional counterpart. In this dimension, everyone has an alternate version of themselves. The Ratchet and Rivet are Lombax, who are a race of dimensional travelers. So you would assume Rivet was a Lombax that was left behind in this dimension like Ratchet was and is. But the game presents Rivet as Ratchet's dimensional other. And since she was left behind in this dimension by her kind just like Ratchet was and is, how could she be his alternate dimension self if she came from the same dimension that Ratchet came from? My head hurts. You figure out this spaghetti logic and tell me why I'm wrong in the comments. Phantom. Moidoy. Captain Quantum. Klatchki. Me. Attention resistance. I'm posting the Emperor's hit list to our network. Is it really that surprising that the Emperor would have a hit list containing all the Resistance members? Of course he would want you dealt with. Are you telling me the Resistance wasn't already on high alert for possible attack? Give me the part. Did you follow me here? Another fruitless effort to win my affection? Give me the part, Pierre. Time and again, I tell you, my heart is taken. I thought characters like this were being cancelled. Pierre is just a robotic Pepe Le Pew after all. Rivet receives a part to fix Clank's long-range communicator. It's not like Clank's the only way to communicate across the galaxy. Rivet sent out a warning to the Resistance after seeing Nefarious's hit list after all. Why couldn't they contact Ratchet with that? I think we have to build a new one. I met a prophet from Savali named Gary. He would know what to do. Clank should already know how to build a Dimensionator. He rebuilt the last one. That implies a working knowledge of it. Whoa! Another Lombax! I get Rivet being a little overwhelmed after talking to a Lombax for her first time, but Ratchet has met two others of his own kind before this. Hello, Dimension! I know I've been away for a... you know how long. Dr. Nefarious likes to release videos of himself despite knowing that Emperor Nefarious is merely away somewhere for the time being, and doesn't seem to think broadcasting videos to the entire galaxy will alert his other to someone taking his place while he's gone. And finding out that there are two, two insolent lumbaxes running around trying to ruin everything! You knew about dimensional counterparts and you brought Ratchet here when you stole the Dimensionator. Why are you surprised by this? My elaborate spy network indicates that they'll be at Blizzard and Savali very soon. That is one amazing spy network you have. Ratchet and Rivet decided on heading to those planets like a minute ago, and Rivet was already on a hit list. Is there a reason to add her to a second? Blizzard Prime was destroyed by an apocalyptic explosion brought on by a face quartz crystal inside their planetary drill by whacking Blizzard crystals. You can switch between this dimension and one where the planet hasn't been destroyed yet. It's another of those levels that gets mentioned a lot since you instantly switch between the two worlds without loading, only made possible by the PlayStation 5. Except I played two games a few years ago that not only had levels like this, they did it better. Both Titanfall 2 and Dishonored 2 feature a level where you can switch between a location and two points in time, using the differences to get around obstacles. Except in those two games, you had a device that allowed you to switch at any point you wished, whereas in Ratchet & Clank, it's tied to crystals you have to hit, so only at specific points do you get to swap between dimensions. It's not bad, but don't treat something that was done years ago and done better as a compelling reason to buy a PlayStation 5. The only thing this game can do that it couldn't do on a PlayStation 4 is the ray tracing. Rivet only needs an oxygen mass to survive in space. Without atmospheric pressure from a suit, you are not lasting 10 steps in that environment. You can argue that this is meant to be cartoonish and details like that can be ignored. And I would agree with you if this lady wasn't wearing a head-to-toe spacesuit to survive here. I just found out there's another dimension where Bleas are still intact. So. Still intact? How do you... Uh, of course! Bleas on! If the planet hasn't been destroyed yet... The miner from the destroyed Blizzon learned of the still intact alternate dimension Blizzon from Ribbit, then ran off to send a warning to it about the drill. I guess in her excitement, she forgot about the person who told her about the other dimension in the first place that could have delivered the message about the drill destroying the planet. Besides getting their hands on face quartz, they also have to stop the other dimensional version of Blizzard from being destroyed in the same manner. But that's only one other dimension. There should be many Blizzards across the dimensions that still end up destroyed. I know this is gonna sound totally weird, but the Mords used to tell me legends about someone on Torin 4 called the Fixer. 
If it's broke, the fixer will fix it. I have come across some convenient writing in my time doing this, but that may take the cake. Convenience is sometimes necessary to move a story along without bogging itself down in details and subplots, but not at the expense of the plot's credibility. Writing can be compared to a sleight of hand trick. A well-written plot is better at hiding such conveniences when it needs them. Then you have Ratchet and Clank where a pivotal one-of-a-kind face quartz is broken. And before you can even feel suspense over this disaster, Rivet washes it all away by saying she heard of someone on another planet that can fix anything. The multiverse is a pretty small place if Ratchet can stumble upon his own counterpart and clanks in one day. Since Ratchet found a pair of hover boots on this planet, Rivet will now have a pair of them as well and never bring up how she just happened to find a pair while traveling to another planet. At least with the guns, they attempted an explanation. These monks need rescuing from prison cells, yet they can open portals and transport themselves back to their home after Rivet turns off their cell walls. The Lombax left shrines behind on this planet that contain lorbs. These lorbs contain about 10 to 30 second long voice recordings of a Lombax exploring dimensions. Seems like a real crap recording format for a few lines of audio. An entire moving statue, plus a glowing orb of data for why it to be a 1 megabyte mp3 file. Kit, like Clank, was created as a warbot, and she seems to be exceptionally good at it. It's enough to make me wonder why Nefarious only built one such robot if they're this capable. You might recall this is the same backstory for Clank, except that Clank was a defective model that ended up pint-sized. If Emperor Nefarious built Kit to be a war machine, why did he also build in a cute and non-threatening tiny mode? Uh, that was amazing! Kit! It's just me! This is borrowing way too heavily from Iron Giant for my liking. I was built to be a weapon, to keep the Emperor's galaxy secure. One night on patrol, I spotted a rebel in the Imperial Zone. So I tried to stop them. That is what I was built to do. So I'm guessing you never attacked or hurt another person before that resistance member, since that's what gave you crippling identity issues. Normally that's a plot you have to earn with a bit more than one conflicted moment. Despite raising the bounty on Ratchet and Rivet, not a single bounty hunter comes after them. The only enemies they ever face are Nefarious' army and later some space pirates. Is the fixer on this planet? Uh, we were told that he can fix phase quartz. You weren't told anything like that. Rivet literally said she'd heard rumors of someone who could fix anything. Same as last time, Rivet acquires a new gadget to overcome a brand new platforming challenge, and Ratchet will have the same thing with no explanation in his next level. If you're going to have a set piece where a depressed giant robot tries to kill Rivet, you're going to have to explain to me why she's strong enough to hold back its finger from crushing her. Rivet should put up about as much resistance as a Pringles chip. I may be different than I was, but you helped me realize I am still Clank. I... I'm quite relieved. That's all it takes to fix a personality disorder that had him going on a homicidal rampage, huh? How can I ever repay you both? Can you fix this? All positive identity messaging aside, maybe ask him to fix Clink's broken body while he's at it. Are you winging this? Ratchet was pulled into another dimension, and now he has to use a machine he's never used before to build a device that can tear holes in the fabric of space and time. The only thing you can do is wing it. Why would you build a machine with a button that breaks it if pressed, and draw the skull on a button that doesn't break it? I honestly feel this scene is Insomniac putting the two buttons meme into their game. While I applaud the inclusion of something of a horror section in the game, the fact that they made all of Ratchet's weapons ineffective against Juice seems antithetical to a game like this. By the end, Ratchet is using these same guns to destroy a building-sized robot, and you're telling me a monster fish is more durable than that? It also doesn't square with the game's established plot around Juice as the power source for the Rubion Forge, since Ratchet watches a video where the robots capture Juice by hurting it, so weapons will work on it, just not any of Ratchet's for no specific reason. Hey Juice, you wouldn't happen to know another way to power up the Rubion Forge, would you? Does he want us to follow him? The please on. He wants to come with us. The juice in the other dimension that was still being used to power the ruby on forge somehow knows about the dimensional rifts and that Blizzard crystals can swap you between dimensions, and that there's another juice in this dimension with a working forge. How would you know that in this dimension, the skull button doesn't destroy the forge? Why does the dimension where the installation is abandoned seem to be controlled by Emperor Nefarious? You come across nefarious robots inside that were destroyed by juice, and this installation operated by enslaving him just like in the dimension where Ratchet broke the forge. Uh, uh, hey. Hey! 
Hey. You build up an eventual meeting between two members of a nearly extinct race, and it plays out like two virgins at a Bible meeting. If Dr. Nefarious knew Ratchet and Rivet were trying to build a new Dimensionator, why did he keep posting bounties on them to kill or capture them before they had finished? The Nefarious of this Dimension finally shows up and takes the Dimensionator and starts using it like this was his plan to get his hands on it all along. I'm pretty sure he had no idea what it was or what it did. When I heard that the Rebel Lombax was battling me. I had to come here the universe celebrate your defeat I would have figured you would have heard about Dr. Nefarious ruling your empire for you after he broadcast his first video to the galaxy And how did you figure he was your dimensional other without any info on the situation? That's a hell of a conclusion to just jump to Why don't we make this interesting? A home game perhaps? You're not going to deal with her here when you have every advantage. We must find Quantum. He is the last rebel on that list Go to Ardolis and find Pierre. He'll take you to him. But you can send a warning to Captain Quantum over your network. You did so after you found out about the initial hit list. I've always had the odd feeling that the world of Ratchet and Clank is a sci-fi equivalent of a universe filled with Ewoks. But now as I fly over a jungle planet filled with dinosaurs while on the back of one with a blue furry humanoid, I'm more reminded of Star Fox Adventures. It's not an improvement. <laughs> Why didn't you have your ships raise their shields from the beginning of the assault on Sargasso or they have them? This is supposed to be the nefarious that always wins. And he gets his entire fleet wrecked by a dinosaur flinging bombs one at a time. Off to Zordu prison you go! Oh, who needs tradition? Let's spice things up! So you just wasted a bunch of battleships when you could have done that back at Zerky's Slaughter Dome. Why put her in prison when you could place her in a pocket dimension? There's only dimensional portals everywhere that she could escape through. Lost friends. My arm. The Emperor did that? Oh, uh, eh, not exactly. It happened during a mission. I found a secret entrance into the Emperor's tower. A secret way into his headquarters. Ratchet hacked one platform and was inside the throne room with no one being aware. Um, girls, pin. Respectable positions of power! Was making an alternative female protagonist not enough to carry a diversity message without being so damn cringe over it? Maybe follow your own ideology if you're going to force people to sing this to complete the game. Captain Quantum leads the pirates, and you've already established that dimensional others can be the opposite sex. The Emperor has a- Dimensionator? You already knew? Har har! We bugged him! Greatest job we ever pulled! Then why didn't you warn all the other members of the Resistance that he was coming to kill them? And why didn't you warn Rivet that he was on his way to her earlier? And if you knew he was coming after you, why are you still here? You have complete knowledge of what the Emperor is doing, and you don't use it. That's it. I haven't really won yet. There are still so many other dimensions waiting to be conquered! Good luck finding them. It took me years just to figure out the coordinates for this one. That's because you forgot the first rule of road tripping. <laughs> Always bring a map. Emperor Nefarious somehow knows about the dimensional map the Lombax made despite only just learning about this dimensional stuff. I didn't even remember that. Probably because Kid only mentioned it once back in the archives. Rivet, the dimensional map's gone. The Emperor must have gotten here first. We're coming up on his flagship. We'll get it back. Here's an idea. Use the bucket you got from Captain Quantum to find out if Emperor Nefarious beat you to the dimensional map. You should be checking up on him every few minutes. What are you doing here? The Emperor captured me after he discovered I'd hidden the dimensional map in an anomaly. He captured you and then let you sit in his seat unguarded? Clank has to do one final Lemmings puzzle, and while he's inside the dimensional rift, Nefarious grabs Ratchet, who he somehow snuck up on even when Ratchet had a helmet that let him see what Nefarious was up to at all times. How does your enemy get the drop on you when you have that? Even if they took away Ratchet's weapons when they locked him up in the prison? Kid is a warbot that could smash her way out of this prison cell and save them all. So either she decided to let everyone die because of her identity issue, or she just forgot about it. Right. You don't need to hold your breath. Ratchet, and by that extension you, owns a breathalyzer or whatever it's called. Ratchet used it briefly back at the Rubion Forge installation. Then again, I don't see the point of the prison releasing laughing gas anyway, or why you'd have to be concerned with it. I am not a good partner. Well, maybe you could be. If you'd stopped to help me that night instead of running away, things could have been different. Stopped to help you the night she blew your arm off? Would you have even accepted her help after that? I don't need a partner anyway. Kit still needs to get off this prison planet to get back to Savali, and you're taking the only ship. Kit should be here. She didn't want to be. Only because she thinks she's dangerous. 
And maybe she is. You could have had this conversation on the space flight back to the station instead of after landing. Even in space, everyone waits until they're in a public place and start yelling at each other. I'd like to honor the good doctor who inspired this journey in the first place. By invading his home dimension personally. If Nefarious didn't broadcast his plans to the entire galaxy, Ratchet and Rivet would have no idea where to go to stop him. He just leaves that portal open so anyone can follow him through it back to Ratchet's dimension. You gonna do anything to stop that slow-moving pirate ship full of explosives from ramming into you? No? Okay then. There, the heart. If we destroy it, we can take down his mech entirely. Why does a robot suit have a heart? Shit. You were right. I cannot run away anymore. She only stayed behind on the planet so she could have a realization off-screen, then arrive for a big damn hero moment. Yes. Overclocking. Over that would only increase the clock speed of its processor. Not all technical terms apply to future technology. The Dimensionator just has a save the universe setting in the menu, I guess. Now that Kit has gotten over a crippling issue of identifying as a war machine, the next game is going to have to come up with a killer reason for why she still rides around on Rivet's back and doesn't just take care of business herself. What if we are washed up? <laughs> 